Sure. Um, I'm one of the original pre-press print guys in the company. Um, I started my life, business life, as a young man in the printing industry in the 70s and was in the photolithography department, which was doing the pre-press preparation and did, did all of the sort of work that is now a push of a button with a camera. It took me weeks to work with retouching chemicals and things to, uh, to get close to the accurate representation of the transparency. So I was apprenticed and then went through um, printing university to a diploma level in, 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 the, uh, in the industry in the UK. Uh, so I started life as a, like a craftsman, a journeyman, and then in, uh, re in charge of supervisor of a department. And then uh, <clears throat> in the late 70s, I got involved with Agfa, Agfa Gave Art, who were, a, were and probably still are a major supplier of printing consumables and were very much a part of the printing industry then. Uh, and I started life as a young sales guy then, learning their products and putting my knowledge of workflow and understanding of, of what was required into, uh, in, into the Agfa products. And I had a quite the largest part of my career with Agfa then, went through various levels of sales and product management, marketing management, strategic development committees within Agfa, both in London and in Antwerp. Um, in the early 90s, I joined Kodak, uh, Eastman Kodak, and had a similar sort of role for Eastman Kodak. Um, but was working with uh, Linotype Hell and uh, aligning Kodak products with Linotype Hell products so that they could compete with Agfa and Fuji, who were uh, the main competitors in the market that place. I lived and worked in Rochester, New York with Kodak and uh, also had a couple of years in Singapore as uh, senior VP of uh, graphic business as in Singapore. So my early part of my career was definitely corporate you know, 14 years, 15 years with Agfa and seven, eight years with the Kodak. <clears throat> then I changed to, what well, to reflect the industry really, applications online uh, was, was coming up, uh, the internet was starting to break what, what used to be a, a very sort of courier driven delivery cycle, proofs coming on forward were just starting to be delivered online with proofing apps and pre-flight checking and various things that were supplied and that was with a company called Vio and um, they were a British telecom Cytex company and that really opened my eyes to applications and software as the next generation of the print consumable and the print f feeder really. Um, more latterly uh, I got into XML database publishing, uh, worked with a company called Advent 3B2, also worked with uh, a dam, dam systems, North Plains in, out of Toronto and Selim out of Austria and over that time really just understood the, uh, the content from both a textual base with the database driven text as well as the image base uh, from my dam days if you like. Okay, so oh, I've almost led myself into the answer here because once I understood the image content and the print content, I knew that they could be automatically fed together and this was going to be the way of the future for the printing industry to, to remove the manual processes. And so I've been working with companies to, uh, to try and create those funneled workflows of images and text content to a single workflow for feeding the web and the, uh, and the print process. And so when I was introduced three years ago to, to print and to the Work2 organization, it, it seemed to me to fit ideally to, to my background and, and to what I aspired to in, in my remainder of my career, really. Well, it's, it's true to say that, that Germany has led the world in automation of print for the retail, manufacturing and wholesale sector. If I look now at the uh, success that Print Comet and Work2 have had in Germany, it's because Germany was leading the, the wave, if you like. If I look at the UK, it's probably three or four years behind Germany. If I look at America, it's similar sort of 
position. If we look at Japan, it's well much further back, five, ten years behind what's going on in Germany. So by good fortune, the software company in Germany is experienced in the German market. What I can see is going to be experienced in other markets. So I feel we're really, really well placed to introduce ourselves to a market that's just ready for going from a manual graphic designer based industry to an automated publishing industry. I believe they go hand in hand, that, I, that the dynamic of the technology evolution is one thing, but understanding what's happening just generally in the world, that, that, that people buy from people and that it is the fact that many national traits in France, in Japan, in America, they, they would prefer to buy from a company and an entity and people who relate very closely to their own local people. So there are some companies that choose to deal exclusively with partners and resellers, uh, but I think our model is that we, we've, we've chosen to have a representative subsidiary office in the key markets that we see in the world, but to work with partners delivering the, the final solution to the customer. So um, partners are a very important part of our business life, but by having local offices, it gives the, the clients the reassurance that there's a strategic investment by the software company in the market, which is equally important for large corporate investment. We've had an incredibly busy 2015-16 so far. Uh, as you may have already picked up from the website or from around talking to people, uh, we have now got uh, a first office in France was opened uh, towards the uh, middle of last year, I think it was, um, out of Paris. And or the organization has already got a, a nucleus of infrastructure of, of um, both technical and sales and marketing support people already in the French office. Uh, we've reorganized our uh, presence in the US to reflect uh, a, a greater intent. So I think there's four or five people now in the US office which is based in Michigan and Ann Arbor under uh, Jonathan uh, Dropiowski. Uh, we've got an intent to continue expanding our sales engineers and, and project delivery support people in the North American market. That, that is the most important market for many companies and it is for us. If, if we don't succeed in the US, then whatever we do everywhere else will be damaged. Uh, so we have to focus on the North American market. But um, in uh, earlier part of 2016, we formed a company in Tokyo. And, uh, and that really gives us the opportunity to pick up the next biggest market in terms of print automation, because the Japanese market is behind the other markets in, in adopting automation and understanding the, the need for that. So I feel that the company has um, gone, undergone some major investments in, in those strategic areas. It's, it's formed a company in the UK to, uh, to, 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 what, to, to also capitalize on the UK's uh, big m manufacturing and brand retailing base. Uh, and, and so uh, the company has formed the subsidiaries in the countries that needed it, needed to be represented directly, and we'll continue to work with partners in Australasia, in Southeast Asia, in uh, farther east in, in Europe, Russia, and the uh, ex-Russian uh, uh, bloc countries. I think they will all continue to have a partner representation. I think consolidation is the key word for my, my ears because if you grow things too quickly, we all know they die. So you have to get the roots, get established, and then you can start expanding the, the orchard. And that's what we're doing. Great. Good. <laughs>